Good evening. The police in St. James have commenced an investigation into the death of a woman who was discovered with multiple chop wounds and her head severed inside her house in retirement district, Granville St. James, yesterday. The deceased has been identified as 53-year-old Michelle Gail Brown, a domestic helper, also of retirement district. Reports by the Granville Police are that yesterday morning a report was made by the woman's employers after Gail Brown did not turn up for work and calls to her cell phone went unanswered. The police journeyed to her home in retirement where she resides with her 29-year-old son who is also said to be mentally challenged. The lawmen discovered that the door was locked from the inside, so they forced their way inside and discovered the woman's headless body, which was wrapped in a sheet and lying in a pool of blood. Both her arms were also partially severed from her body. Her head was later found wrapped in a towel inside the kitchen. Investigators have revealed that her son has since been taken into custody and that Gail Brown is believed to have been murdered between 8 p.m. on Sunday and 4.30 p.m. yesterday. Nalda Barnaby, a neighbor and close friend, told Mela TV News that she has known Gail Brown for over three years, even before she came to live at retirement. When the point when the boss, you know, show power. So the boss come in the community, come look think and find the boss, you know where he lived, and when dropped him up one night. So apparently at them alert the police and when the police come they climb down in the house and they find him in a pool of blood. So me knew. You understand that her head was severed, her head cut off. Differently, as some of my daughter tell me, they say find the head and I the head and I bed and anybody did different place. About three years or so she moved from up here. About that. Or she went live early in the time. Sad, really sad. Really sad. Sad. She said Gail Brown is a Christian-minded person, good to people, very quiet, and has a kind heart. She alleged that Gail Brown's son always pestered his mother for money to purchase ganja. Okay, madam. Could I have your name, please? I'm Nalda Barnaby. And, um... Could you... I mean, no, Miss Michelle, for the past, but she, you know, she, since she moved and lived here, so... But maybe not, we've been a friend before she moved, up because we always said... She, um, talk with each other like when you come to work and so we always you want no assistance with material put up or anything we assist her. So we are good friend from friend he move from up here only sir. So when we come in last night and see the act devastate it until now. Michelle is a Christian. Michelle is a people person. Michelle is a good woman, quiet, nice. Michelle not talk hard and she will be sadly missed. No. Me not know you so abuse him mother but you see, when a person mad, you have to keep them at distance. You can't get them around. Because they head, we tell them to do your things. And one of the reasons why I believe in killing mother, he want money. He want money. And he lay the refrain from giving money because um, he didn't go buy weed. And he didn't want to go back at this stage when he come from. So he didn't refrain from giving money. So Friday morning, when I come in from market, he said to me, say, I ask Miss Michelle for some money. And Miss Michelle, I work the funds and care and come like Michelle now and give me money. So he said to me, I don't no money can give me. He said, I just spent all our women got to come in just come in from market. So apparently, when Michelle worked on and come in for the weekend and gone in bed Sunday night, he would have killed him in his sleep for the money. A police officer was rushed to hospital after he was attacked and shot by gunmen in front of the Central Police Station in Kingston this morning. Details of the incident are not fully clear at this time, but reports are that the policeman who was on duty was driving a motorcycle when he was approached by gunmen who opened fire, hitting him at the intersection of East Queen Street and East Street. The criminals escaped. The injured law enforcer was rushed to hospital where he was admitted. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson today said the officer has since been treated and released from hospital. The police are reporting that there was an eight-vehicle collision along Constant Spring Road in St. Andrew this morning. The major crash occurred in the vicinity of Dunrobin Avenue. The police say at least four of the vehicles were disabled and had to be towed away from the accident scene. Motorists were advised to use alternative routes until the vehicles were cleared from the roadway, which was eventually cleared and regular vehicular traffic resumed. 
Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the coaster bus that caused the accident this morning has over 150 outstanding traffic tickets. So I have probably seen the same videos you have seen um, where the uh, coaster bus seemed to have plowed into the back of one vehicle, pushing it into other vehicles. Um, and the, the vehicle it plowed into seemed to have been a black pickup and it had stopped. So interestingly enough, when I checked, I had them check the, uh, on the driver of that coaster, there's 120 outstanding tickets. And this is a point that I have been making in this whole business of what happens on our roads. Until when the police issue these tickets, it matters. We will continue to have these people doing all kinds of things on the road. So they, they, we're looking forward to it. We had some discussions recently about when the new regulations of the traffic, Road Traffic Act comes into force and the other challenges that they are in the system to get the proper consequences associated with breaches of the Traffic Act. The police can write tickets and we write tickets as per um, what we are allowed to do and when there is a warrant we go for the person who does it. Now there are lots of challenges and um, this is something that we won't get to explore in great detail today but I mean I have a whole panel of journalists on. It's something you should be looking at. Now the point of the matter is that he like so many others who end up in these situations are multiple offenders, multiple outstanding tickets and once we deal with that you will see order return to the roads. Major General Anderson, who was speaking during the Jamaica Constabulary Force press conference today, also reported the number of murders and violent incidents. When we examine children as the perpetrators of major crimes, some concerns begin to emerge. By definition, a child is a person below the age of 18 years. But bear in mind that most of the perpetrators in this category are between 15 and 17 years old. Let's examine the four-year period 2019 to present. Overall, during that time period, children have been charged with 875 major crimes in Jamaica. There have been 79 murder charges, 66 for shooting. A total of 175 children have been charged for rape over the period. There have been 256 charges for breaches of the Firearm Act, 175 for break-ins, 89 cases of robbery and 65 for aggravated assault. These individuals who, if we do not act collectively, are getting into an early career of violence and crime. We are bringing this to the nation's attention because as a society, we have to decide how we are going to save them. As the police, we engage in various early intervention strategies through our community safety and security branch and programs like the Police Youth Club. As we have spoken of previously, we work closely with the Ministry of Education and the Safe Schools program. However, we all must take this matter more seriously. The pandemic of violence is infecting our children. They are not merely innocent victims of violence. In far too many instances, children and adolescents are actually the perpetrators themselves. It is important that all institutions of society be vigilant and engage in early surveillance and monitoring, whether in the home, school, or elsewhere, so that we can identify the early signs of violent tendencies before they become a law enforcement problem. And stay tuned to the full broadcast of the JCF's press conference following this newscast. In the meantime, the Jamaica Constabulary Force is urging members of the public, especially business owners who conduct transactions in the Newport West area of Kingston Wharves, to ensure they are conducting transactions with legitimate companies. This advice comes as the JCF said that there have been several reports of persons being defrauded by unscrupulous persons purporting to be legitimate business entities. 
Among ongoing cases are 62-year-old Aston Brown, otherwise called Charlie Brown, of Majestic Gardens, Kingston 13, who is scheduled to reappear in the St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday, December 15, after being charged with obtaining money by false pretense and larceny by trick, resulting from an incident in June 2015, where he collected 85,000 Jamaican dollars for the sale of six truck tires. He was apprehended on Monday, May 9, 2022, during an operation on First Street and charged after being pointed out during an identification parade. The next incident involves 46-year-old Wayne Clayton of East Carlisle Way in Waterford, Portmore, St. Catherine, who is also scheduled to reappear in court on Thursday, December 15, after he allegedly collected 8.6 million Jamaican dollars from a man for the sale of an excavator that was located at the ports. An operation was conducting during which he was arrested and charged on September 21 for obtaining money by false pretense. Two men, 47-year-old Jason Benjamin of 7th Street in Trenchtown, Kingston 14, and 35-year-old Dwight McFarlane of Daffodil Avenue, Union Gardens, Kingston 13, were charged with larceny from a motor vehicle. Reports are that on Monday, June 20, a man parked his motor truck on 1st Street in Newport West and went to conduct business. Upon his return, his vehicle was broken into and 490,000 Jamaican dollars stolen. Closed circuit television footage showed Benjamin and McFarling committing the crime. They were both apprehended on Friday, July 1 by a police team on patrol and have been since charged. They are scheduled to reappear in the St. Andrew Parish Court on Friday, December 16. Benjamin was also charged with larceny of a motor vehicle, stemming from another report. The JCF also reported that intelligence indicates that crimes of this nature increase during the Yule tile season and as such, people are advised to utilize various means of verifying the authenticity of a sale and also to safeguard their motor vehicles and other properties when transacting business in the area. Persons are asked to contact the Newport West Police at 876-923-4877 or for assistance in facilitating their transactions. In other news this evening, a 22-year-old, Karine Johnson, a, 20, a tattoo artist of Burn Savannah in Froome, Westland, has been charged with rape following an incident that occurred in Savannah Lamar in the parish on September 21. Reports are that a 14-year-old girl went to Johnson to get a tattoo. On completion of the service, it is alleged that Johnson held her and forcefully had sexual intercourse with her. A report was made to the police and an investigation launched. Johnson was subsequently arrested and charged following an interview. His court date is being arranged. Government Senator Charles Sinclair is calling for the revision and strengthening of the country's old public order legislation. He said that it is his view that over the decades, legislation, particularly those which address public order issues, have not been adequately reviewed, enhanced, and enforced, and that our public order legislation, for whatever reason, have been left behind. Senator Sinclair made the call while making his presentation in the State of the Nation debate in the Senate on October 28. He said that the fines for breaches should be increased to deter individuals from committing them. Some of the legislation cited include the Constabulary Force Act, Town and Communities Act, Public Health Act, Country Fines Fires Act, National Solid Waste Management Act, Parochial Roads Act, and the Town and Country Planning Act. Senator Sinclair explained that while the review and modernization takes place, they must emphasize enforcement as many of these fall under the auspices of the municipal corporations to enforce. Meanwhile, Senator Sinclair said in the anticipated review of the Jamaican Constitution, he's recommending that the provisions in the Constitution headed Charter of Rights be amended to read Charter of Rights and Responsibilities. And those are the stories making the news this evening. I'm Nicole Hales. Thanks for watching.